people always say that their kids are perfect. I never really believed it. But that was until me and my wife had Millie. My God. Millie is just perfect. Every time she looks at you, there's just this love and her smile. I've never known a kid to smile as much. To, to just always be happy, even when you're telling them off. I mean, that's her defining trait. She's had asthma from a young age, and I suppose you, you deal with it, don't you? But she's been so brave. She's always smiling or laughing. She sees the, the humor in the world. She takes it all in a stride. She just, she just defines perfection, really. But sometimes it's tough. It's tough because, like my job, my job takes me away quite a large proportion of time. So I'm a, I'm a lorry driver. But, you know, you gotta work. There was one particular journey. I'd basically been working two days doing the same run, which was up to Scotland. So I'd, I'd, I'd pick up the, the crate from Dover, and then I would make my way up to Scotland. My lorry is something else. Like, I invested in my own lorry. I even got a paint job on it. So it's red and white, my two favorite colors. I was forever getting air fresheners before every journey. Even if the old one wasn't done, you could still smell it. I just needed a new one because that journey could still be long. It's my home, I suppose. I do end up spending more nights in the lorry than I do at home. So yeah. Basically, <clears throat> went and got the, the shipment that came in. Do all the paperwork, do all the normal stuff. It takes a while. I've got that done and I set off on my way. And I always usually follow the same route. I take the A2, hit the M20, and then I'd, I'd always go up the M25 if I couldn't. Um, come up around the west, and uh, then I'd hit the M40 just by Oxford. And then when you got to Birmingham, it was the M6, and then you always had the toll and stuff, and <laughs> that's just a pain. Um, and my stopping point then was plain sailing, straight up the M6, just the other side of Carlisle, at a service station. I stopped off, and I could feel myself quite tired. I, I parked up in my, my usual spot. Obviously, I've been on the job quite a bit. So I, I pulled up and um, I could feel myself drifting off. As I was drifting off, I could hear this commotion going on. And I was like, what's that? It, it's only a small service station, so I didn't really understand what was going on. I thought, ah, do you know what? I'll go check it out. So I got out of my cab and I walked over towards the service station. As I came round the side of the service station, it was actually a carnival. <laughs> I was like, What's a carnival doing here? But if you can imagine, the, the carnival kind of looked like a circus. You know, like a circus tent where it peaks. And it was red and white, a bit like my lorry. I remember the night before, whenever I was driving back, it had been raining like crazily. Thinking, why did they set this carnival up like, on this soggy ground? But hey ho, there's this carnival. So I, I venture in, and um, there was tons of people. And I, I saw these kids with their parents. And something just felt off. And then I, I noticed that the kids didn't have any shoes on. What kind of parent would you be if you let your kids go out without like a raincoat that's raining, or, you know, without shoes in general, socks and shoes? And then it just it started to feel a lot more off. So I continued walking. I didn't want to say anything, it's not my place. So I kept walking. 
And as I was walking, I felt this tug from my right arm. I ignored it, I just continued. And then the tug happened the second time. I was like, no, just keep going. And then the last time, I felt a tug that just swiveled me right around. And then I was greeted with this woman in front of me. I can't even describe her. Her hair looked like it, it hadn't been washed in weeks. She had this smell. I don't know if you've got cats, but you know when the cat litter needs to be changed, so it's overdue a change. It's like that stale smell. She smelt like that. So rather than be confrontational, I was immediately kind of defensive and I backed off. And then she just sort of said some words at me. She told me that you're gonna find a cure for your daughter's asthma on this journey. I was dumbfounded. I was... What? And then before I knew it, she was just gone. She was dispersed into the crowd. This is just some crazy woman who's grabbed me saying random things, but how does she know I have a daughter? Or even more to the point, how does she know she has asthma? So I, I just kind of brushed it off, went back to my cab and slept it off, really. I got up the next morning, drove to Glasgow and got my delivery done. Again, the whole process and paperwork, handover. So I thought, oh, do you know what? I'm gonna look for a nice little pub that I can go to, have some food. And I actually found a really nice pub with good reviews. And uh, yeah, I went there, had a steak. It's really nice. And I ended up getting, speaking to the, the barman. And we had so much in common. It was unreal. So. Like he's got three kids himself and um, his oldest is a girl and she's 15. So we were talking about like how I'm gonna deal with being a, well having a teenage daughter. It was quite funny. And then the conversation kind of got disrupted because he had to go serve, so that was fine. So I'm just sort of finishing off my drink and this strange man comes over to me. He taps me on my shoulder and I, I, I turn round and so like, everything okay? And he said to me, he couldn't help but overhear my conversation. I hear you've got a daughter. So like, yeah, what's it to you? And with that, he basically proceeded to tell me that he had a cure for asthma. <laughs> I was dumbfounded. I, I was just shocked. What? <laughs> basically, got this cure and he was on his way back to see his son and give his son this cure and his son had an asthma attack and died before he got back. He wanted to give this to me so that my daughter could be cured. I left the pub just ecstatic. I was so over the moon. This was amazing. So I was walking back towards the hotel all I had going through my head was that woman. How did she know that? How did she know that? What else did she know? How did she know to approach me? How did she even know I had a daughter? Or how did she even know my daughter had asthma? Like, there was so many questions. And there was only one person that I was gonna get them answers from. So I went back to the depot. And I, I got in my truck and I, I broke protocol. I broke the rules that I should not break and I, I know that I shouldn't have done that. But I needed, I needed these answers. And I drove back to Carlisle, to that service station, to find her, to see what else she knew. And I drove faster than I probably should have done. And I hadn't slept as long as I should have slept. But I needed to get back to that service station. And when I got there, I pulled up. I pulled up close to the service station. It wasn't even my usual spot. I was so frantic as I ran around the back of the service station. Nothing. 
field was empty. No more lights. No more tent. Just a field full of mud. But then I kind of composed myself. I wanted answers, yes. But I caught a cure. I caught a cure to save my little girl from asthma. So I thought I can, I can sleep easy. I know that tomorrow I'm gonna see my daughter, I'm gonna see my wife, and I'm gonna have a few days off. So I went to sleep. I was awoken by, by a smell. It wasn't a smell that was in my cab before I went to sleep. It was a smell that I recognized of dirty cat litter. It still smelled. And I shot up out of my bed and before I could crack my eyes and focus on what was going on, I could tell there was someone sitting in the passenger seat of my lorry in my cab. And then, like, before I could even address this person, I knew who it was. That woman. She was there. She was there. But how did she even get into the lorry? She's right there. Before I can even react or say anything or ask anything, she just turned around and said some words that will haunt me for the rest of my life. She said to me, your daughter will die before you get home. So I panicked. I... I panicked. Before I knew it, I, I jumped out of my bed. And I, I... I was in the driver's seat. I turned the ignition on. I needed to get home. Just drive home. Just drive home get there as quick as I possibly could so I could give her that cure. So I could give her that cure and then she wouldn't die. I needed to stop my little girl from dying. I needed to protect her. I needed to save her. I, I just needed to drive. So I drove. I, I went as fast as I could. I didn't even see if the woman got out of the car. I, got, I don't even remember. I, 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 I didn't even go to Dover to pick up my car to drive home. I just, I needed to get home. And we had this long driveway. And So now I have a, a cure for asthma and I can't use it. Do you think you might get any use out of it?